What's good, peeps? What's good, everyone? How are we all doing? Hopefully, you guys are all doing well. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget as well to like and share the vids. Happy New Year, people. Happy New Year. Um, I just got back from Nigeria. I was there for Christmas. And I thought, you know what? Let's just get to the studio and do one more video. One more video before the end of the year. Quite a lot's happened in the last sort of week or so. And obviously, we've not spoken about it. So, yeah, we'll do this now. Uh, before we do that, hopefully, you guys all had a good 2022. If not, um, I do pray that 2023 is going to be a bit more positive. I'm not quite sure if you are one of those sort of New Year's resolution type people or person. Um, I kind of am. What I do and what I've started to do over the last few years is sort of write down a few targets um, and tell a few close friends, family members, and they all hold me accountable throughout the year to make sure I still get those targets. So that's what I do. So if you're not a New Year's resolution person, try that. Try maybe writing down a few targets and telling a few family members or whatever. All right, anyway, enough advice from Uncle Ade about your life. Uh, let's see. <laughs> let's see what stories there are to end the year. Let's start with this one. Uh, BoxingScenes.com's 2022 fight of the year is Dimitri Bivol. Yeah, look, no problem with that. Um, I'm a massive, massive Dimitri Bivol fan. He's almost become my favorite fighter now. Um, look, he had a standout breakthrough year, right? I mean, beating Canelo in what really is his backyard at the T-Mobile Arena. And not just beating him, but the way in which he beat him, I thought he was actually comfortable. Like, uh, it was... It wasn't easy. It's never easy with Canelo, but I thought it was comfortable. That's probably the best way to describe it. And then beating the unbeaten Gilberto Ramirez in Abu Dhabi. Um, I just thought he looked perfect in both fights. Honestly, he surprised me how good he is. Watching him up close and personal, um, I've been surprised just how talented he is. And um, it isn't just that as well. Obviously, when you're picking your fight of the year, you're only really picking them for what they do in the ring. But sometimes, like back in the day anyway, we would say that a world champion sort of has to hold himself like that outside the ring. And every time I see him interact with not just me, but with other people, he's always smiling, always talking well. There's never an issue of, I've done too many interviews, sorry, I've got to go. He's just, he's just such a nice guy. So he ticks all the boxes for me. And look, if I'm honest with you, I mean, look, he's 2022 fight of the year. The plans they have for him for 2023... I mean, if they come through, he could be fight of the fucking decade. Honestly, I mean, look, it looks like they want to go for this Canelo 168 fight, which is undisputed. That's going to be undisputed. Now, if you get past Canelo, if you become undisputed at 168, the only fight he wants after that is Paterbiev, which will be undisputed at 175. I mean, if this guy were to become undisputed in two weight classes in the year. Look, I don't know if that will happen. It could happen, by the way. It's not It's not that far-fetched, but if that were to happen, he's fighting the decade already. And the decade's only three years older. He'll be fighting the decade. No one's no one's touching that. <clears throat> no one's touching that. Undisputed at 168 and then undisputed at 175. And not only that, it's the people you beat to become undisputed. No one's touching that. But look, that's... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Jamel Charlo, I make 154 very easy. He could stay at the weight for my whole career. Um, it's a shame we're not going to see Jamel Charlo versus Tim Zhu. Jamel Charlo would have beat Tim Zhu anyway, but it's a shame. Um, I did read somewhere that Tony Harrison looks like he wants to kind of get the opportunity to step in and fight Tim Zhu, which I think is a fantastic fight. Um, Jamel Charlo, I still think, and let's not forget, he's undisputed at 154. I still don't think he gets the respect and recognition he deserves. I think he's a fantastic fighter. And you look at the res and that's win or lose, by the way. Remember, he lost to Tony Harrison, the controversial draw against Castano. But you look at the resume. Look at his last 10 fights. I mean, he is fighting people. Like, he's fighting really high-level ranked guys all the time, back to back. And I feel like he deserves way more respect. I know people now have him in um, their top 10 pound for pound. May and a lot of people that have him in only have him in at like tenth or ninth. Maybe me people need to really look at that because again, if you look at the body of work, it's frightening. Honestly, it's really really impressive. Um, hopefully, his brother can catch up sometimes. Uh, Javante Davis, I'll fight Isaac Cruz again. I'll stop him next time. I did lots of bullshit in my first belt. All right, let's talk about Javante Davis. A lot's happened in the last sort of four or five days. When it comes to Tank, uh, let, let's kind of start 
forwards, then we'll kind of work our way back. Forwards is that the fight with Hector Luis Garcia does happen. That's now being confirmed. He will fight this weekend. We're going to do a live watch along for it. Remember I said we're going to stay busy with these live watch alongs. So that's going to happen. Obviously, what's happened in the last 48 hours nearly put a stop to this fight. Obviously, look, um, he allegedly, or he was arrested for allegedly um, striking, I don't know if it's his partner, his ex-girlfriend, his baby mother, I'm not quite sure. That's what happened. Now, a lot of people, when this news broke, and a lot of people were like condemning Javante Davis. A lot of people were like, well, one second, you're, you're too quick to react. Let's hear the facts first. It, it's difficult to not be quick to react when it comes to Tank Davis and that news. Just because you guys will remember what happened, what, two, three years ago, where I don't know if it's the same female in question, but when he grabbed that female by the neck and kind of dragged her out of the court. Do you remember that? And everyone was like, oh, one second. If you can do that in public, then I don't even want to think of what you could do behind the scenes. And again, I don't like to talk about people's private life because this is just a boxing show that I try and do. But sometimes they go together, right? Javante Davis has a history. So you are going to jump to conclusions. Um, now, look, it all seems to have been sorted out. I don't know if it's the case of it's been sorted out because said partner has decided to drop charges or it didn't happen. Um, I would like to think it's the latter. But again, going on what we saw a few years ago, I'm not quite sure. But um, look, I just hope the, the, the worst thing for me is when I see fighters with all the talent in the world not fulfill their potential. It, it It's a bugbear of mine. It really, I don't know. Like every time I see Tony Bellew, I always say to him, like because Tony would always be the first to admit, not the most super talented, but I always say, man, you maximize your talent, dude. Maximize Anthony Crawler, another one. Max, like I can't ask you for any more. When I see fighters not maximizing their talent, whether it be inactivity, bullshit outside the ring, Broner springs to mind, and, and people like Tank now with all this other kind of bullshit, I just want you to kind of focus on fighting. Focus on fighting because it's a short career, and, and it's done soon. It's done. Tank's 28, 28, and when you hear things like this with Tank. <sighs> I don't know, man. You just kind of feel like it's a slippery slope to not, not only not fulfilling your career, but just not having a career, like it being cut short early. So hopefully this is um, this is another wake up call for Tank. Hopefully this is not taking his mind off the job he's got to do on the weekend because look, we all want to see the Ryan Garcia fight and Hector Lewis Garcia ain't no joke. Ain't no joke, right? Cause an upset. Um, was it last year with Chris Colbert? Yeah, no, this year. So it is good. It's good. Um, again, for those that are saying don't jump to conclusions, don't be silly. Don't be silly. You're going to jump to conclusions. There's certain people that do certain things where you would jump to conclusions. It's just how it is. Like if um, if, if we heard Broner, we're going to jump to conclusions. Not Broner when it comes to domestic abuse, but other stuff. We're going to jump to conclusions. There's certain people, unfortunately, because of their past, that you will always jump to conclusions. But let's um, let's hope that, let's hope it's been sorted. Let's hope for the sake of the female in question that it's been sorted and it's not just a case of her deciding or being told to say stuff, if, if that makes any sense. Let's just hope it's all ticked and done. What what um was interesting with regards to this tank stuff was... um. Connor Ben came out and said a couple of things to Tank and they, they kind of went back and forth um, for a day or so over social media. And I was like, where's this come from? Like, I've never known these guys to have any issues in the past. I'm guessing Javante maybe said something about Connor Ben's issue with um, uh, the PD use. and Maybe Connor Ben has waited for something to happen to them retaliate. I'm, I'm not quite sure, but it was interesting to see Javante and Connor go back and forth. And a lot of people in the comment section were like, who would win? And I was like, huh? I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, Javante, we know, has got knockout power, but so is Connor. And Connor's a lot bigger. So, look, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I just found it quite interesting that people were then sort of sizing the two up. Um, I used to look at Javante as a 130 guy. I know he fights at 135. I look at him as someone that can get down to 130. Connor Ben's becoming quite a big 147 that can hit. So, look, I mean take whatever you want from that but I think I'd favour Connor. I mean Javante gets hit but then again Javante's got that power to put you to sleep. Interesting. Anyway look aside from that we I think Connor Ben tweeted something the other day uh, about he's um, 
his um, situation with the WBC. I think he said something along the lines of, can you hurry up? I want to get on with my career. Let me see if I can find the tweet so I, so I can read it correctly. Um, has he deleted it? I don't think he has. One sec, peeps. Hopefully he hasn't deleted it. Okay, this is what he said on December 29th. Um, at VADA testing, at WBC boxing, I need to get on with my career. When will there be an explanation? My name deserves clearing and I can't keep waiting while you carry out your internal investigation. <clears throat> That's what Conor Ben has said to the WBC and at VADA testing. Um, I don't know. I'm surprised he's done that. His advisors would have probably told him not to do that. But then this is a guy now that seems to be frustrated with how long this is all taken, whether good or bad. Um, obviously, we know that his team sent a 270-page um, brief to the WBC. I mean, that alone will take a long time to, to go through. But um, look, Conor Ben clearly feels like he knows what the decision is going to be. And he's just waiting for it to be officially announced now. So look, I, again, I... I, I I can't wait to see how this is going to play out. I, I can't wait for it. I did say on um, a video about this maybe a couple of weeks ago, it isn't necessarily Conor Ben proving to the WBC he was innocent. I think it's him proving to the boxing fans. And I said that's going to take a lot. That's going to take a lot longer and it's going to be a lot more difficult than the WBC saying, yep, okay, you were correct. You can now continue fighting. I think there's a bigger fight in the next sort of year, 18 months of Conor Ben, a much bigger fight because boxing fans don't forget. I, I keep saying that, they kind of do. We boxing fans kind of do actually. When you think of some of the high profile fighters in the last two, three years that have, or the last four or five years that have been caught taking stuff, boxing fans actually do forget. But I feel like because of how this all played out with Conor Ben, Chris Eubank, I feel like there's a there's a lot more fight that Conor Ben's going to have to do in the next 12, 18 months. Just my opinion. Uh, Warren defends Middle East as site for Usyk Fury. You go where you can to earn the most money. Yep, I, I get it. I, I, I get it. The only problem with Warren saying that is that Tyson Fury always continually talks like he doesn't care about the money. I'll fight people for free, he says. I'll give the fans the free fight. So then when Frank says that, it's like, one second, your boxer saying he doesn't care about money. Um, although we know he does. Um, look, I mean, I get it, right? I mean, you, you're going in there, you're, you're risking your life, and it's true, you're risking your health. Pay me the most money for that. Um, I think I also said last week that, or the week before that, if it's going to the Middle East, um, at least for UK fight fans, it means we don't have to wait up to two, three in the morning. I mean, for every big fight for the last fucking 20 years, we've had to wait up till five in the morning because all those big fights were in the US. At least it ain't going to be like that. Um, I can't wait for it. It looks like the fight's close to being signed. It looks like we are, we're pretty much there. Um, can't wait for it. Honestly, can't wait for it. I know I did my five fights to watch for 2023 and that one wasn't part of it. Um, it's probably number six or seven. I can't wait for that fight because I think Usyk, man, I think Usyk causes him problems. I really do. I know Fury's big and he's so good, but Usyk's not small. I mean, this is the thing. Because Fury's so big, I think people think Usyk's tiny. Usyk's very big as well. I've sat, I've standed, I've sat next to him. I've stood next to him. I've interviewed him. He's a big guy. Just that Fury's a monster. <laughs> uh, <coughs> uh, Warrington discusses defeat to Lopez. Claims of being dirty, the future. Uh, Warrington obviously now will want the Lee Wood fight. That's it, right? It's a world title fight. You're straight back in there. It's a big fight. It's um, it's a fight that will do big numbers. Um, as for the claims of being dirty, I think Lopez come out with an interview and I think he was asked about giving Warrington a rematch. He was like, hell no. Like, he's a dirty fighter. He should be banned from boxing, blah, blah, blah. The problem with Warrington is that there are too many incidents now of the head clashes. Like, if it happens once or twice, it's okay, you know, it happens. But it happens a lot. It was almost a bit like Timothy Bradley coming through where it's always head clashes, always. Um, I don't know if he's a dirty fighter, but he does come in fast. He comes in reckless and fast and he always comes in like that. And it's just, it's just going to cause a problem. Um, so yeah, I don't know. But look, I still think there's a lot left in Josh Warrington. And look, he could possibly beat Lee Wood. So look, and now that's a, a legit title. Remember, Lee Wood's been elevated. So 
if I'm if I'm Josh, that's the one I want. The only thing for Josh is that he knows he's going to have to take B-side money, even though he does bring a big crowd. He has no belt. Um, he's lost what, two of his last four. So, um, and one was a no contest as well in there. So, yeah, he, he's, he's going he's gonna to have to realise that he's no longer the A-side. He's the B-side now, definitely. Uh, Chantel Cameron, uh, Christina Linadatu, uh, the WBO have ordered the title fight, heads to purse bid hearing. Uh, Chantel Cameron, obviously undisputed. Um, I said this fight, remember, I, I, shout, I mentioned two names for Chantel Cameron. One I can, completely got wrong, which was Delphine Pursun. Chantel's a bit bigger than her, but I mentioned Lina Dartu. Lina Dartu fought um, Katie Taylor. Uh, Katie Taylor's one and only fight at 140 pounds. Lina Dartu caused her some problems. Lina Dartu's been out the ring for a while, though. She had a baby. I think she's had a fight back. So, um... I don't know. If I'm Lina Dartu, maybe have one more. One more and then jump into a Chantel Cameron fight. If you're Chantel, do you vacate? Is that a fight you really want? Um, remember, she's in the sweepstakes for the Katie Taylor fight. So, yeah, see what she does. Uh, Billim Smith says, React Poor turned down a rematch. Uh, cited location as the reason. Um, if you're React Poor, you want a world title fight. Um, look, you, you've already beaten Billim Smith. It was a close fight. Um, I saw Shane McGuigan talk about this the other day. He thought, obviously, he thought his guy won. I've spoken to Chris about it. I think Chris maybe thought he nicked it as well. Obviously, Rappaport, um thought he won. So the only way you do that as a rematch is if both bring something different to the table. If you're Rappaport, your next step has to be a world title. If you're Billum Smith, your next step has to be a world title. I don't see the point in both of them fighting each other now. For what? Unless there's a vacant world title on the line, I don't really see the reason, if I'm honest with you. Um, all right, see, okay, a bit here uh, about the Javante Davis stuff. The mother of Javante Davis's daughter recants domestic violence claims, so she's basically said it didn't happen. I don't know. I'm not quite sure. Uh, this is interesting. Robert Garcia says Anthony Joshua needs a stricter camp. What does he mean by stricter camp? Let me quickly click on the story and see if there's anything. Um... Um, okay um, this is what he says because everything was kind of easy and quick for him he thought that was the right way to do it that he didn't need to do it any other way um, but when the time comes for this kind of fight such as Usyk with fighters of a high level tougher fights harder fights you need a stricter camp where uh, he follows indications Joshua is a dedicated fighter he does listen to what he is told to do but maybe he thinks that he was a champion without doing that much without commitment but when you are fighting against opponents like Usyk that is something different hmm interesting okay um it's weird because Joshua is the type of for me anyway look I'm not in Joshua's camp I've only been to his camp once or twice before but it, it, you would think that Joshua is strict like like you would think that everything is methodical and just every single box is ticked so that that does surprise me um, a little bit. Um, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure. I'd, li I'd, li I'd like someone to go and sort of maybe ask Robert what, like 100%, does he mean AJ sort of turned up late? Does he mean he wasn't following instructions? Too many people in the camp? Too many hangers on? What, what does he actually mean? Um, but yeah, that's that's quite interesting to hear because again, AJ seems to be the type of fighter where from the outside looking in, does everything perfect. Um, Liam Smith, I know I'll beat Eubank then beat him in the rematch if he wants it. Good fight. Really, really looking forward to this fight. Um, slightly disappointed it's on pay-per-view, but it is what it is. Um, but looking forward to it. I, I, I favour Liam Smith as well. Um, I just feel like I'm going on what have you done for me lately. I've always done that. And Liam Smith's looked good. That fight in Russia, which was about 18 months ago where he got defeated, but I thought he won that fight. Then he beat Anthony Fowler for me and then Vargas. And people might say, okay, yeah, but, you know, that they're not Eubank, but he's staying active and he's winning. Whereas Eubank started really good against Liam Williams and then for some reason, I don't know what happened, just took, maybe took the foot off the pedal. I'm not quite sure. Uh, Marcus Morrison started really well again, then faded. So he clearly has this thing where he starts well, then he fades. We've seen it. I've seen it a couple of times now, back to back. And you can't fade with Liam Smith because Liam Smith actually, I think, starts slow, then gets better. So if Liam Smith can be in there early still 
with him, then I think Liam Smith will start to get better as the rounds go on and I think might inch out um, a victory. That's what I think. Um, uh, Broner. Uh, Shakur Stevenson would be the most difficult fight for Tank. I think Shakur Stevenson's the most difficult fight for fucking anyone, if I'm honest with you. Um, I really do. I, I, I can't wait to see this kid's progress. Um, I think he's special. I, I think he's really special. I think he's gonna, he's he's gonna be a champ at one thirty-five. He's going to he's going to be a champ at one forty. And I'm not even playing. I think he will be a champ at one forty-seven. I really, I'm not even playing. I think he's um, an incredible fighter, incredible fighter, and he's just getting bigger as well, more confident. He's in and around uh, with Terence Crawford all the time as well. Like, he should, I just think he's sensational, sensational. Um, the WBC to introduce category for transgender boxers um how how um i need to read that up a bit more um this is what they've had to say though no athlete should be precluded from competing or excluded from comp competition on the exclusive ground of unverified alleged or perceived unfair competitive advantage due to their sexual variations physical appearance and or transgender status okay look you know what? we'll we'll read up on that a bit more before we um before we comment on it um it's a bit wild but we'll, we'll read up on it um all right anything else before we go uh, a bit here about Rosado. uh Rosado still sort of mulling over the future um it looks like he will call it quits um, if he does, man, what a career, man, Rosado. I mean, well, no, pretty much very, very minimal amateur pedigree has fought everybody, <laughs> literally. Um, and he's the kind of fighter, a bit like Chisora over here, where he's got double, like Rosado, I'm guessing, without even, I'm guessing Rosado's got 14 defeats. Let's have a look. But you know he's not going to be an easy night's work for, for, for you, right? How many defeats have Rosado got? 16. 16 defeats incredible but he's just and he's been robbed a few times by the way he's been robbed a few times but he's fought everyone he's fought everyone man jesus christ i mean it, oh I, I like him i like rosado I've, I've sat with him I've, I've spoken to him about boxing and i like him man if he does sort of hang up the gloves well played honestly well played what a career what a career all right um i think we are done. Um, just a quick video to say Happy New Year, to give my thoughts on Javonte Davis and Connor Ben. Um, again, um, look, we'll start again next week. We're going to start again with all the videos next week. And we, as I said, we'll do the live watch long for Javonte versus Hector Luis Garcia. And then we're going to do the live watch long for Yard Perturbia. We're going to do the live watch along for Smith Eubank and everything else in between. Peace out.